Standard quickie. Get ready for this one. Robert Lucas said, Given that the structure of an econometric model consists of optimal decision rules of economic agents, and that optimal decision rules vary systematically with changes in the structure of series relevant to the decision maker, it follows that any change in policy will systematically alter the structure of econometric models. In other words, when you're looking at highly aggregated economic measurements and variables in macroeconomic equations, don't go feeling you can tweak those variables and indicators with policy changes. We see all the time that government does things like raise taxes, and in their projections they assume that all of the other variables will remain the same. They won't, because people will make different decisions based on the new tax rate. The Lucas Critique says that you can only make the changes you want by considering the actions of individuals in the economy, not collectives or aggregates. One big example sticking out of Keynesian economics like a giant zit is the Phillips Curve, which basically says that you cannot have rising unemployment and inflation at the same time. That probably does hold true in a free market, but when policymakers try to exploit it, like they did in the 1970s by trying to combat unemployment with an inflationary monetary policy, it didn't work. You had rising unemployment and inflation at the same time, causing economists to have to come up with a new term, stagflation. They made that mistake because, absent monetary policy, inflation generally occurs because people are spending more and saving less. That results in greater consumption, which leads to greater employment. But inflation is just an indicator of this, not the cause, so creating inflation wouldn't make it happen. You can't fix your car by disconnecting the check engine light. It'll make the light go off, but it won't fix the problem that made it come on in the first place.